Hello everybody and welcome to my Void Fiend character guide. We'll start here with an overview of his abilities, then go into general gameplay tips, and finally cover some items that synergize particularly well with his kit. Let's begin. The Void Fiend is all about picking and choosing his engagements by managing two different forms, controlled and corrupted. His passive, Void Corruption, is what dictates going between the two forms. You'll have a small meter in the top left while playing him, ranging from 0 to 100, and once the meter fills, you will then transform into the corrupted state, keeping the general feel of each of your abilities but modifying them to be more aggressive. While corrupted, not only will your abilities change, but you will also gain 100 additional armor, which is a nice little 50% damage reduction. Managing your corruption meter is the key component in playing the Void Fiend effectively, but for now, let's just talk about how it goes up and down. I'll talk about how to efficiently control the meter in the gameplay section. First, while in your controlled form, your meter increases by 3% every second, and while corrupted, it will decrease by 7% per second. These values never Never change and they can never be outright prevented, only mitigated. Speaking of mitigating, to gain corruption, you can either 1. Take damage, or 2. Critically strike something. To lose corruption, there is only one way, healing. Whenever you take damage, you gain corruption equal to half of the percentage of health that you lost. For example, you can see here that I take a hit of 216 damage with a total of 770 HP, equating to a 28% loss of health, so my corruption meter then goes up by 14%, which is half of that 28% loss. Just think of this as the higher you are hit, the more corruption you'll gain. For crits, it appears to be dependent on the hit's proc coefficient. Here you can see that I'm getting 2% per hit for both the controlled primary and secondary, but while corrupted, the secondary gives 2% while the primary only appears to give 1. I'm unsure what the proc coefficient of the beam actually is, but if it's 0.5, that would make a lot of sense. Remember, these values are based on the number of enemies hit, so you'll simply need to hit more things to gain more corruption. The actual damage that you deal with the crit is irrelevant. Now, to lose corruption, for every percent of health that you heal, you will also lose that same amount of corruption. You don't actually have to recover any health, the only factor is when you see that green number popping up. You can see here that I heal for 100 HP, when again I have a total of 770. That equates to a 13% heal, so I lose 13% corruption. Hmm, if only there was a way to consistently heal a percentage of your health. Also, your region does not affect the meter at all, so things like cautious slugs will not impact your corruption. Finally for every void item that you have, your base meter will go up by 2%, indicated by the little white notch. This means that if you have 10 void items in total, your baseline corruption is now 20%. You will never go below that point. I know I just hit you with a ton of information on his passive, but again, understanding the corruption mechanic is essential in getting good runs on the Void Fiend. Let's move on now to his primary, Drown. The controlled version is a long distance beam that deals 300% damage and slows by 50%. This beam is both cross map and hit scan, meaning that it has infinite range and no travel time. So long as your reticle is on a target, you will hit that target when you fire. Unless you have a lot of attack speed, then the bloom or the spread of the shots can get a bit tough to handle. The corrupted primary is a short range channeled beam that deals 2000% damage per second while slowing you by 50%. The default tick rate is eight times per second with each tick dealing 250% of your base damage. This tick rate does scale with your attack speed, meaning if you have 100% speed, the beam will tick 16 times dealing 4000% damage per second instead of two. The Void Fiend's secondary ability, Flood, is a 600% damage missile that can be fired instantly or an 1100% damage bomb that requires a brief charge up. Corrupted Flood instantly fires the bomb with no charge period necessary, and that bomb travels twice as fast with twice the explosion radius. For both versions, the cooldown is 4 seconds. The main difference between the controlled and corrupted bombs is the trajectory while they travel. The controlled version will have no arc, while the corrupted one does. All that means is that to hit distant targets with your regular bomb, simply aim at them, while you need to aim above them with your corrupted one. Also, the cooldown period begins when your bomb reaches its maximum charge, not when you fire it. So, by holding a fully charged bomb, you can then release it and immediately follow it up with another one, provided you held it for at least that 4 second cooldown. Finally, the cooldown of your bombs, and all abilities for that matter, are separate between your two forms, meaning you can use a controlled bomb right before you transform and then immediately fire a corrupted one. Next, the Void Fiend's utility ability, Trespass, sends him upwards in an arc, cleansing all D buffs. The corrupted version is a quick dash forward instead of up, but also cleanses debuffs. Both of these are self-explanatory, just use the controlled one for vertical mobility and the corrupted one for horizontal. Because your corrupted primary is such short range, the momentum boost that you get from the corrupted dash will aid you tremendously in closing the gaps between you and the foes you wish to disintegrate. Also, you do get a very, very slight boost in height from corrupted trespass, however, you do not get full directional control. Aiming completely upwards will not make a difference in your height. Finally, the 
Void Fiend special is Suppress. The controlled version trades 25% of your corruption meter for a 25% heal, while the corrupted one does the opposite. Basically, the regular one keeps you in your regular form, while the corrupted one keeps you in your corrupted form. Both of these abilities have no cooldown, just have the animation speed, which is faster the more attack speed that you have. All right, let's get into actually playing the Void Fiend. Long story short, you want to stay in your non-corrupted form as much as possible. You have much greater flexibility in how you approach a given encounter with the trade-off of not having as much overall damage. You do this by essentially spamming your controlled special. Even if you don't need the heal, just get in the habit of tapping R whenever you see the meter get above 60 or 70%, as when you need to transform, those remaining percentage points will be very easy to quickly acquire. I can honestly count the number of times that I've used the corrupted special across all of my Void Fiend runs on a single hand. That's just how often I use the controlled one to stay in base form. As soon as you see a tanky elite spawn, want to activate a combat shrine, or are about to hit the teleporter, then you let the rest of your corruption meter fill up and then burst down those targets as quickly as possible. Like I said, if you're doing all of that correctly, you will rarely feel the need to stay in your corrupted form for longer than a handful of seconds. Thankfully, there's uh, not much to the Void Fiend other than managing your corruption. All of his abilities are extremely easy to use and to understand. Remember that critting and taking damage will cause you to gain corruption while healing will remove it. And that's really all there is to it. Now, in terms of specific items to get, there actually aren't any. That's the beauty of the Void Fiend and why I believe he's one of the most powerful survivors at the moment. His playstyle is that flexible. Foreshadowing for the next survivor tier list. I found that worrying about picking up specific items due to how they'll impact your corruption meter just straight up is not worth it. Sure, it may affect you for the next stage or two, but it's never unbearable and you'll quickly offset any pull too far in one direction as you keep getting more and more loot. However, the one potential exception is the Weeping Fungus, as with only a few stacks, you'll be healing a tremendous amount and thus removing your corruption at a vastly accelerated pace. However, as I said in the gameplay section, you'll want to be in your controlled form for most of the time anyway, so the Wungus isn't an absolutely avoid item, just one to be conscious about. If you don't have a lot of crit yet, for example, you may want to avoid picking up more than a couple stacks of Wungus until you have a bit more control over when you are able to transform. Also, remember that each void item that you pick up adds 2% to your minimum meter, so don't get too crazy at a safer spaces printer early on, or else you'll constantly be transforming back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, losing out on a ton of the Void Fiend's flexibility. I advise halting your void items around 60% corruption, so 30 items total, and then you finish off that last 40% in one fell swoop. If you get 50 void items in total, your minimum will be 100% and you will permanently be in your corrupted state, and if you're at that point in a run, well, you've probably already won anyway. And that's it for everything on the Void Fiend. What are your thoughts? Leave a like or dislike on the video and a comment below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash wooldygaming and consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching.